Hello everyone, welcome to another 5Q game. Uh, if you're enjoying these games, make sure to leave some comments down below and let me know what you're enjoying about them. And I guess you could like or subscribe or do those other things that people tell you to do. So let's get into a game here and uh, see how it develops. See how fast I get one. Start oh, to play. Nice and quick. Let's play uh, three, four points today, see if he stays. All right. Well, oh, let's see. It's taking a while now. Okay. Hmm. This is perfectly fine to do, I guess. Uh, I could approach any of these moves, or I can enclose. I'm just going to do a normal small knight enclosure. Ah, I always like attaching underneath. Very happy to do that. And just a normal Joseki here. Normally you would want to play high as white. Uh, because if I approach here, the follow-ups are not as big of a deal. But it doesn't really matter too much. You can play whatever one you want. I kind of want to approach really badly, so whatever he does, I'm probably going to approach uh, the bottom left, I guess. Maybe it'll make it so I can develop something on the top left as well. I could play high, use, get some influence. That could work. Oh, good. It's been 11 moves, so he can't, uh, he can't resign without losing. <laughs> But you probably don't need to be spending too much time thinking uh, about this move. So maybe he's going to the bathroom. Oh, there we go. So approaching low and high, I'm not sure which one matters too much. If I approach high, I'm probably going to be able to build this a little bit easier. But approaching low is better for territory. And of course, this move is still good. Hmm. I'll approach low. Ah, oh, the kick. That's really good for me. So, if he tries to fight here... Oh, he's doing that. Okay. If he tried to fight here, I could do a similar thing that I did in my last video which is this attachment. But sort of playing an awkward shape here. This isn't even uh, this isn't even like a Chinese shape here. So even if he gets this enclosure, he's not really building too much. So I'm not really worried about this move. So I think I will just attach here and see what he wants to do. Do this one to strengthen my stones. Or... Yeah, there we go. I could take the corner too, that'd be fine. Just extends is fine. Same thing as the last game. If you watched that video. <laughs> hmm. Now it becomes really obvious that I can build on this side, right? So he could do something on the top here. This is still a big move, especially now it's getting even bigger. But this corner is also really good for me to approach now. And me getting this uh, thing on the left side, this extension here is also good for me. So there's three Nine, moves eight, that he sort of seven, wants to play. Six, he can only get two five, of them. Four, three, two, one. Ah, pushing again. I am fine with extending again. I don't want him to Hane there and get a double Hane. Okay. So. Hmm. 
I think this is fine for him to do. This group has a decent shape, so I would call it very thick instead of uh, really potentially being weak. So I don't really need to push from this side. So if I want to, I can push this stone towards this wall. Or I can just Tanuki and play somewhere else. I think I will just uh, push it towards the wall. And I'm going to do low, because if he goes low, then I can invade and get rid of his base. And if he goes high, then I'm fine with having the low stone there. If he doesn't play anything, then I can play this high move here and try to attack him or cap him if I want to. Maybe even do the knight's move. Anything Nine, I want here. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Okay, he jumped down. That's a very heavy move. So I definitely want to try to make his group even more heavy. He's sort of like digging into the side, but he's not getting any eyes. So I definitely want to peep here. This move here would get rid of his ice shape, so I'm fine with that. And I'm fine with backing off, because if I get to cut through there, I get some points. So I got to solidify some of my corner. There's always Aji in this corner, even if it's the most solid one. And he still has this weak group in the center. I also got to make a little bit more ice shape for my group on the bottom. So this seems very good for me. So I guess it depends on which direction I'd want to push this group now, but it's a little bit hard to figure that out right now. So I could take one of the other moves here. He got one of them. So I could approach on this side, or I could do something on this side. I think either one is fine. So let's approach the corner. That's usually better, right? Corners before the sides. He already has this pincer stone in place, but it's very far away. So I'm not too worried about it. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. He's pushing again. I don't think that's good right now. So I'm going to press his stone down. He can get this Hane now if he wants to, but then I'll take the corner. I was going to push and cut. If you push here, you're supposed to cut. And this will get really complicated, so we'll see what he wants to do. I probably don't have the ladder here. Maybe I do. Seven, I thought these six, stones might have gotten five, in the way, but it looks like they don't. Four, three, so I could, ex two, if he cuts, I could extend one. this way. Two yo left. Okay, so he's just going to do push me on the bottom, which is really good for me. Uh, this stone's not important. And what's important now is the corner. Corner's not alive yet. And now this stone is inefficient because it's no longer building anything. And that's sort of the reason why you keep extending here is because when they Hane, they get the points here. And they usually get to connect up with another group. But in this case, they don't get either of those. Uh, this is a bad move for eye shape. But I'm just going to protect my cutting point because I do need to keep my group strong. So he needs one more move in the corner to be alive. And is that alive? If I push here and he connects, I can throw in here. And he has a little bit of a problem. Ooh, my welfare tree. 
There we go. Um, so there's nothing wrong with this push, so I might as well do that and see how they respond. If they play inside to make it alive right away, then it was a good exchange for me. And it doesn't really lose me any strength there. They can probably turn here and make uh, make the group alive. Uh, but apart from that, now starts. it's a little bit like this is sort of a weak eye. It's not a complete eye here. So let's see if we can get anything from it just by playing the vital point. Okay. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine space area, which means you can potentially make a Seki here in the future. So I'm just going to leave this here for later in the end game because this shouldn't die, but there's a possibility for something like a Seki. Nine, eight, now this seven, stone is sort of six, all on its five, own. Four, three, two, one. Hmm. So I could try to come out and attack it like this. But if it just comes over here and makes a base, that seems okay for him. So I could just try to make a base here. Or I could go over to this next big point. If I make this base Nine, and he defends eight, himself, then I can seven, still get the big point. Six, five, so four, three. let's do that. And if he doesn't defend, then I can attack this single stone here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last Byoyomi. Okay, last Byoyomi. <laughs> I think there's already stuff you can learn from this game. So even if he runs the time out like we're worried about him doing, uh, it's probably still a good enough video. Let's see. Nine, eight, Let's check this. Seven. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, so he was worried about his corner. Hmm. I can accept that. But the problem is, if he's worried about his corner, then this turn here is probably still Sente. Because it would still be a similar situation in his corner. I do want to keep my group very strong. So I will be turning. Ah, he went and lived right away. Uh, this is just a reading thing. You need to make sure to do lots of life and death here. Uh, I didn't read it out. But as you heard, I just sort of know that with this many spaces, it can, it's likely to be a Seki. So I thought that was good enough for me. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, so let's separate this four, stone three. from the other side over here and force it to run around. So if we can force him to jump this way, we can probably cap here and try to attack this group later on. So the question is, would we want to force him to jump again or just cap right now? So we can see what he wants with this peep here. If he connects, then I'm going to cap because he's heavy now. And you'll have to struggle to survive in some way. And if he's not going to connect, then we can push and cut. That was what we were threatening. So we can still do that if we wish to. Or we can threaten the cut Nine, and jump out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now we were threatening the push and cut, so let's push and cut. 
I almost misclicked. <laughs> but it's all good. So if he pushes here, uh, I do have a little bit of weakness with these stones. So I want to get some more liberties with them. And I want to threaten his group a little bit. So I think turning here is fine. If he's also able to push here before me, then he can potentially develop a couple points on this side. So I think this turn is good. Just block is fine. Mm, that's a... Uh, it's a little bit of a questionable move. It's probably fine. But... It's a little submissive. It's better to have turned out here at 013 instead. So let's just play the big move here and see what he wants to do. Ah. So he's worried about me making points in this area. Let's just strengthen uh, my group here. Yeah, just strengthen it. Protect my couple of points here and uh, protect my cutting point a little bit too. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Hmm. Trying to very, very loosely connect and surround stuff. Hmm. Nine, eight, seven. What's what happens five, four, if three, I two, invade? One. Let's just see. Hmm. All right. So, if I jump out and he just surrounds me, that could potentially be bad. So, what can I do? to threaten us around this group. Nine, I think something eight, like this. Seven, this knight's six, move. Five, four, if he pushes and cuts, I can Atari, and then I can try to surround on this side. We'll see if it works. I'm fine with giving up this stone. The only goal here is to try to get something, right? Hmm. So this is going to be a reading problem, right? So if I do this one, and he does that, then I can Atari and come through, and then these stones might be dead. If he does Nine, this one, I can push, eight, he blocks, seven, I connect. Six, five, it's a little bit complicated. Four, three, so let's just honey three. over the top and see if we get anything. because this stone doesn't have a lot of liberties. Ooh. So, we do have to worry a little bit with our group as well. Nine. But we can give up this one stone Seven. if we need to. Six, five, four, three. So let's play here and remember that sequence I was telling you about before. We can try that out. Because now there's all these Ataris here. Nine, eight, seven, six. Hmm. So he connected, which means when we connect here, we have cut off these three stones. That doesn't mean that we've gotten anything here yet. But we can still try. So it's better to do this one. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, or this one. Four, three, I think just connecting two. is probably fine. So it looks like we probably can't capture these stones. But is there something else that we could do? Since these stones are cut off, we are very likely to get this end game here. But there is also this weak shape Nine, here. Eight, so maybe we can try seven, to use it. Six, five, four, three, two, hmm, one. Not sure how. But we can try. Last Yo Yomi. Let's try the uh, elephant eye. Just for fun. It's possible that if we played something like N16, we would be able to capture these stones. But we're not going to worry too much about that. Nine, I'm eight, trying to seven, see if we can get anything six, against five, these stones. Four, three, two. One. Oh, he ran out of time. Well, this has to make the score. Black plus 25. These are probably dead. We can say these are probably dead. But let's look at what could happen here. Let's open up the review board. Like we said earlier, uh, it was very likely he was just going to let the time run out. So I did record like a little review here, but I think I think I was going into way too much detail. It was way too complicated. Um, I think I was playing a bit too complicated in this area in general. So I should probably have just left it, honestly. Let's go back to where I think I'm making potential mistakes here. I think it's with this move. Because my opponent responded really well. This is actually a pretty good move to try to fight back. And if I want to really try to do something here, it's going to involve a lot more reading, probably. And make some shape. Um, maybe some sort of co thing, right? Like, it, there's a lot more reading that I'll have to worry about doing here. And I probably shouldn't have been doing that because I don't really need to. So his jump down was actually good here. And it's probably good for me to just jump here if I want to point out some of the weakness in his shape. Instead of trying to be more fancy, you could say. Yes, he has a little bit of something he can do here, but I think I can defend in Sente because he probably doesn't want me to push through this area. And then I can connect solidly here. Then I don't have to worry about any sort of shortage of liberties on my end. He can protect on the top. And it seems difficult for him to have made a lot of points with this because now I can just slide he just ended up protecting all of his stones, and I get to take away his top points. If he tries to do something else, then there's a little bit more that he has to worry about, especially with this group here. But at the very least, um, I can just leave the situation now and continue to develop some points on the bottom. Hane here to connect up my groups, or even jump up here to develop some points in the top left. I don't need to keep going in this area, but if I am going to go in this area, just a simple jump here is probably fine. So let's look at some of his potential mistakes now that we've looked at mine. What I think are the biggest mistakes he made, and that would be not finishing the situation was a little bit of a mistake, but... He just gets me some strength here. Uh, that push probably fine. Um, 
but he had this unfinished situation, which allowed me to get some strength. And then he also sort of has an unfinished situation over here. He sort of needs this enclosure to really have any points or any sort of a reason for this Q10 move. Because otherwise it's just sort of floating there, not really doing anything, doesn't really have any connection to anything else on the board. This one's fine because it's separating and breaking up the left side of the board to make it smaller territories. So I think this was probably his biggest mistake in the game. Uh, he played properly over here. This is a s small mistake, and then not finishing the bottom here is a small mistake. But none of these are really going to lose him the game, right? But in this case, he allowed me to get this strength in the middle. And this group over here is solid. And he doesn't have a base or eyes with this group. So jumping in and digging into the side where he's not really threatening anything, the only thing he's really threatening is making eyes, right? And if he wanted to threaten making eyes, he could try to go all the way here, just do a small knight here. This is much better for eye shape. Because if I prevent him from over here, he can now jump off into the center somewhere anywhere and any other move now is going to make a little bit of a boxy shape where an eye is going to be right but he's moving towards the he'll be able to move towards the center like this if he was worried about the side and trying to make some eye shape or something here for this one it's it's threatening eye shape to a degree because if I play away, then when they play this one, they have a much better shape on the side. But I can peep here, which would make them very heavy, and then attack them from the center, which was sort of the, the more important side. I could even potentially attack them from the center right now, if I wanted to. But generally, it's good to try to make them heavy before make them invest in this before attacking them from the center. But I think he handled the situation fairly well. I went down here to threaten to capture the stone. He pushed and then defended. He doesn't need to defend necessarily, but he got some influence here to potentially jump out towards the center. But again, if I just attack him from the center, he's just a very heavy group. I didn't want to do that in the game because this was a really big move. And I'm not sure where my profit is necessarily going to be right away. But because he's giving me the option, I decided to approach first to see if he's going to allow me to separate this or not. And then if I'm allowed to separate it, I can attack one side, which would make the other side week as well. But let's look at the corner and see if I can kill it before we say for sure that he didn't need to play. Normally, the first move you want to look at is a Hane here. So let's, uh, let's add this move for white. This is really good, actually. Taking the center, protecting, developing, estimate score. White maybe can win, right? So normally, you'd want to try the Hane first. If they take the vital point here, like he did in the game, I would have to play here to try to kill it, but seems a little bit difficult, right? So if this move leads into this one, I should try to play this one first, which is how I would probably go about trying to make the Seki. If he plays here, I would need to Hane to get rid of the eye or I could do this one to try to get rid of the eye as well. But with this move directly, this already is a an alive shape. Because like if I'm able to get this one, I can sort of make a bulky five or something here. So it's better to go from the outside first. If he plays this shape to try to get rid of the bulky five, I connect. 
It doesn't look like I can kill it, right? Let's fill up the liberties here. Is there anything that I can do or is there anything that white can't do? And is this a Seki, right? If it's just a Seki, then it's no big deal. But if this is just a live and there's nothing else that needs to be played, then it was definitely a mistake to just take that corner. It's always good to try to read it out. And that seemed to be kind of the biggest problem he had in the game. Playing very heavy, then not being able to sort of read out the situation. Like read out uh, this corner life and death. Because if he's able to play this move, like I said, it looks like maybe white can get something here in the center. Which is why when he turns here, I should probably just take that for myself. Or I should probably try to fight like I did in the game. Separate him from the top. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game and the review I did. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have fun.